Hi and welcome to the third lesson in the social stratification topic. This lesson we're going to focus on the Marxist and feminist criticisms of the functions perspective. So last lesson we did the functions perspective. This lesson we're going to focus on how Marxists and feminists would criticize what functions say. So again, we're going to recap some of key, the key ideas for functionalism and look at how alternative theories can criticize this. So as a starter, I've got four key sociologists from our year 10 content. Can you match up who said what? So I'll give you a few minutes. Feel free to pause again, as always, work through at your own pace. Um, email me if you have any queries or questions. So answers are, so Murdoch, hopefully you can remember, did the four functions of the family. Wilmot and Young talked about symmetrical families. Parsons, we talked about stabilization of adult personalities and the role of so socialization. And Zaretsky talked about the family being a unit of consumption and a uh, kind of Marxist idea. So recap then, can you remember without looking back, what were the kind of key four or five ideas that Davis and Moore said about society and how roles were, certain roles were maybe necessary for society to operate. So can you remember them? Now I'm assuming some of you have cheated and looked back. If you have, or if you can remember them, how could you criticize this, this idea that all roles need to be performed conscientiously, all roles need to be performed by people who are well-trained how could this be criticised? Because that's what we're going to focus on today. So, your activity for today can be done in a number of different ways. So, if we were doing this in the room, you would have this sheet that is on the right-hand side of the screen. Um, and I'd get you to cut them out and order them into functions, no, sorry, Marxist ideas and feminist ideas. You can do this in a number of ways if you don't have um, access to printers at home. So you could bullet point the key ideas that you think are Marxist in one side, uh, feminist in another. You could um, highlight on the sheet if you can, can print out the sheet. Um, you could copy and paste using the sheet that is on the PowerPoint, which is in the shared area. So it's up to you how you kind of do this. So what I want you to do is work out which statements are to do with feminist ideas and which ones are to do with Marxist ideas. So again, think about with everything we've done, think about what are the uh, core or key ideas for each theory, and then see if you can work out which one you think goes with which. Once you've got them into kind of two categories, then could you put them in order? So they follow a logical order. So I'm not gonna tell you what order they go in. It does make sense if you read it. So try and figure out which way we do it. Then, using your own knowledge, summarize each theory into no more than 200 words. So for instance, what is the gist of Marxists? What are they saying? What is their argument? How are they criticizing the functionist argument? And then what are feminists saying? What is their criticism? So this lesson is quite a short lesson, but I put some discussion topic areas for you to have a think about. Obviously this works better when we're all in the same room, but you know, we've got to work with what we've got. So. Do you think it matters that some people earn much more than others? As long as everyone's got a basic living standard, does it actually matter? You could try having this discussion with people at home if you want to, if anyone's about that you can have a chat with. You know, does it actually matter that some people earn significantly more than a lot of other people? And this is something we'll come back to, but I thought it was quite an interesting thing. So on the last slide, it talked about, does it matter as long as everyone's got a living wage? This breaks down actually what that really is. So if you're under 25, the minimum wage by legal standards is £7.70. National living wage over kind of over 25s is £8.21. And then what a lot of um, organisations have worked out is that to actually be able to survive and pay for everything and, you know, have an okay standard of living the minimum wage or the living wage should be £9.30. And some places do pay a living wage, others don't. So, you know, that's very much based on the organisation. So, yeah. Do you think we should scrap complicated benefits, move maybe towards a more universal basic income? Um, if you go through the PowerPoint and click on the link, it shows you an interesting video which it talks about the idea that benefits 
are a kind of cycle that can keep people trapped in poverty. So maybe, you know, if we get rid of a benefit system, move towards maybe everyone gets a minimum amount of income. And then if you work on top of that, then that's a good thing. So it should give you some ideas, things to discuss. And then finally, there is a little practice question for you to have a go at. So what do sociologists mean when they talk about an open system of social stratification? This is quite, you know, we talk about some of those questions where it's not super obvious what you need to write about. This, I think, would be one of them. So what do you think an open system is? So if you're stuck, go back to our first lesson that we did before Christmas. What do you think an open system is? So for three marks, define it, explain it, ideally give an example. So this is your lesson for today. Let me know if you have any problems. Um, yeah. Cheers. Bye.